Now that we've set our part zero and set all of our tool length offsets, the part is ready to be machined. The one thing that we're missing is our program. Your program will be on a USB drive similar to this. We're going to go ahead and load our program into the machine now. Take the USB drive and place it in the side of the pendant. Now we need to access that USB drive and copy the program over into the memory of the machine. So hit list program. Right now we have a choice between memory, user data, and USB. We want to arrow right until USB is selected and then arrow down until we find our program. Once we highlight our program, we can hit F2, which is copy, and it's going to ask us where we want to copy to. In this case, I want to copy to the memory, which is the first choice. I hit enter, I hit enter again. It is now copying from the USB into the memory of the controller. Once the program is transferred, we can go back to the memory, so home, arrow up, arrow over twice, arrow down, and what we want to do is we want to select our program. Highlight your program, press select program on the pendant, and it'll be loaded into the memory. Once it's loaded in the memory, we can go to memory, and we can actually run our program. There's a couple of things that we want you to do before you just hit cycle start and run your program. One thing is we want you to bring the rapid down to 25%. The other thing that I like to do is I like to bring my feed rate down to 50%. The other two things that I like to do is I like to turn on the single block and I like to turn on optional stop. The reason for that is I bring my rapid down so that the machine doesn't move faster than I can react to it. The reason I bring my feed rate down is if my feed rates are incorrect or my tool is dull, I'll have less of a chance of breaking my tool while I run my first part. The reason I hit single block is so that I can cycle start through the beginning of the entire program to make sure everything's working correctly. And then lastly, I put optional stop so that when I get to my next tool, it will pause and I can go through the safe procedures again. Safe stands for stop on approach to check for errors. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through, we're going to follow the cursor, and we're going to figure out what the machine's doing next. I'm going to go ahead and close the doors. I'm going to hit memory. And every time I hit the cycle start button, the machine should process one line or one code at a time. So as I get to my safe block, I'm checking to make sure that my safe block is set up correctly, make sure I'm in inch, make sure I'm in XY, make sure I'm in absolute, okay? Make sure I grab the right tool. In this case, it's tool two. So it grabs tool two, and you can see how much slower the machine moves, okay? My next movement is a height reference. I'm gonna move about two inches above the top of the part. So when I'm done with this line of code, my tool should be about this far above the part. If it's not, I've either set up my tool incorrectly or I've programmed it incorrectly. Now, when I run my, when I run my parts the first time, I usually have one finger on cycle start and one finger on feed hold. That way, if something's happening, I can kind of page between the two of them and kind of sneak up on stuff. You can use the emergency stop to end the program and stop the machine all at once, but realize that that's not going to stop the machine. The machine will continue to move slightly even after the emergency stop is set. So I like to use the feed hold. Unless it's something I, I've lost control of, then I go for the emergency stop button. So in this case here, again, I'm using these two fingers together. Okay, spindle speed seems right. Now I'm looking at my position, and my position says x minus 1, y minus 1.5. So I want to make sure that I'm moving to that position in relationship to my 0. Now I'm coming down 2 inches. I'm keeping an eye on my 
positions here. So what I like to do is I like to hit the position key and I like to make sure that I'm in the distance to go or you can actually go to all and I like to keep an eye on the, the Z for my G54 because that's how far I am above my part. And I also like to keep a, a eye on distance to go. So if I take this minus this, I should end up with two inches. That's what the program says. Okay, I've got about three inches to go, about uh, half an inch to go, okay. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the coolant here. Now, if I'm actually machining and the coolant turned on, I would have to make sure, okay, I go ahead and stop the spindle. I would have to make sure that this valve is turned 90 degrees, that it's vertical, okay. With it horizontal, no coolant is going to come out of the nozzles. So make sure that if you are running coolant on your parts that this is vertical, that this valve is open. The way you can always tell if a valve is open, the handle should be parallel with the valve. If it's perpendicular to the valve, it's closed. Okay? So right now I'm about an inch and a half. That looks like about an inch and a half. That looks like about an inch and a half, and I'm two inches. Again, I'm going to slowly work my way through the program until I start until I start cutting, but so far so good as far as the position of my part. I look at my next line of code. I should go down about 25 thousandths above the top of the part. So again, I turn the spindle on. Always turn the spindle on. Don't wait for the machine to turn on, especially if you're already in the cut, because the time it takes to ramp up the spindle, it'll start moving it. It'll start moving the axes before the spindle is up to full speed, and you could break your tool. Also, make sure your coolant's on if you're in your part and you're already cutting. So my next cut, or my next move should be 25 thousandths above the top of the part. And you can see here, I'm about an inch and a half away from the part, and I'm about 25 thousandths above. I'm pretty confident that I could continue to run this part. When I start cutting and it, I listen to the sounds of the end mill or I listen to the sounds of the drill, at that point, I will increase my feed rate by 10% until I reach 100%. And then I will also then increase my rapids to 50% for my first tool and then 100% to subsequent tools once I'm sure that everything's set correctly. So if you follow all the steps in the setup procedure, you should not have any problems with any of your tools. All your problems should happen with tool one and only with tool one. Okay. So at this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and stop the machine. I don't want to make any chips. The next process we're going to go over is how to clean the machine once we're finished machining.